Welcome back, Orleans, to the final episode of Dead Synchronicity. Or at least what might be the final episode. There could be another episode, especially if this shit keeps happening. Oh, no. It's like... Well, it's like the same thing you said last fucking time this happened. Good God. I think I'm starting to lose my... Holy ball sweat. I don't see... Hello, Mr. Sleepyhead. Have you come to help us? I don't know whether who I was before the Great Wave entitles me to make any kind of moral judgments. But what I do know is that the Hunter and his men are a real cancer in this new world, which is the only thing that really counts right now. The girl has a right to defend herself, that bastard said. So someone should give her the chance to do that. It's only fair, right? I can't get you out of here, Rose. I'm sorry. You're the only one that can do it. Thank you! As she was picking up the revolver, she gave me a look of determination <laughs> that I didn't know she had in her. She's gonna fucking Rose blow her brains out. so quickly that I barely saw what happened. Now we're the talking. in the door of her van. Her hand was steady, even when the second man begged for his life. Sobbing and groveling on the floor, the bullet went right through his heart. Blood splattered all over her white dress. That a girl. And then she let the revolver drop and sat down, lost in her own world. And she didn't do or say anything else. Hold up in her tiny, delirious inner landscape. There she had everything she could ever need, safe at last from the new world, which she will probably never return to. God damn, man. Making me want to shoot myself. Alrighty. Well. I'm afraid those bastards just played their last hand. I can't help but think those guys got what was coming to them, even if that's a thought worthy of the hunter. No. The water turned the generator into an enormous hunk of scrap metal. Why would I want to take it with me in this condition? Why not? The hell? Another one of those repeating images. Of those damn time loops. No. Rose. No, don't do it. No. It's Rose. Killing her captors again. But there's something in this one that makes it different. It feels more real, and more intense than the other times. The fuck? There are a few lousy coins. They don't look like they're worth much. Just a few loose pennies. It's Rose, sitting perfectly still and staring off into space. I'm afraid she's gone, and she's not coming back. I'm not gonna pick up that revolver. What for? Rose fired the only two bullets left in the chamber. I don't know. Find more bullets, asshole. No, I'd only rip it if I tried to pull it down without first taking out the screws. Well, we got perfect screwdrivers. Let's see. The coins fit perfectly in the Everyone heads of the screws. Everyone knows that pennies It'll are It'll be no trouble loosening heads. them and taking the fabric with me.
damn it. That's what happens when you bring electrical devices in contact with water. The contents of the water tank made it completely useless. No, the water turned the generator into an enormous hunk of scrap metal. Why would I want to take it with me in this condition? Those bastards just played their last hand. I can't help but think those guys got what was coming to them, even if that's a thought worthy of the hunter. Have a vision, motherfucker! No. Rose. No, don't do it. No. Ah! We've wrapped the generator with the black bag and the photography cover. Stops the water from leaking on it and damaging it. Okay. First, I'll unplug the cables that connected to the trailer. Would have been cooler if they added more interactivity during those scenes. I mean, this is like the one time you solve a puzzle within that that time warp, and uh, it just seems kind of like stupid. Why do it only once at the very end of the fucking game? I don't know. But here is the last achievement. Ugh, no. What the hell am I trying to do? Besides the end game achievement, of course. In this trailer. For good. The Thing. Fantastic movie. brought the generator you need, Chris. Great, Michael. I knew you could do it. Give me a few minutes to set up the computer and open the report. While Chris was getting everything ready, I decided to sit down in one of the armchairs in the office. I was exhausted. My mind had been trying to make sense of the last few hours of my life for what seemed like an eternity. The first hours following my bitter birth in this new world. But how could I judge the new world if I could barely remember the old one? The only thing I was sure of was that we had lost something very valuable along the way. The photograph of our life, overnight, had turned into a dark, blurry, sepia-tinted image. All of civilization had drowned under the great wave, and the only thing left on the beach or its remains. But no, I was fooling myself. I was already lost before the catastrophe. To tell the truth, all the other victims of the Great Wave have been luckier than me. They still dreamed of returning to their lives. Mine had already been broken a long time ago. Did I really stand a chance of recovering something I'd already lost forever? What type of strength, what type of miracle could ever give me that second chance? Michael, wake up! What's happening? The report, Michael. It's the report. I was going over it while you were sleeping. It's incredible. It's way beyond our expectations. You're gonna think I've gone crazy, but I don't even know where to start. How about at the beginning? Okay. It's the dead synchronicity point. The entire universe is changing, and we're going to witness it. We're going to be witnesses, and victims. Witnesses? Victims? But what the hell are you talking about? What is this 
dead synchronicity point. It's hard to explain. You're a photographer, so I'll try this analogy. Imagine a person's life chronicled in photographs. Up to now, and according to the rules that governed our universe, we were all subject to certain very specific temporal rules. Past, present, and future. That's all there was to it. So, the first thing we'd find would be a photo of the person as a newborn, then another on the person's sixth birthday, then another in college, and so on. Then we'd see photos of the person's wedding, children, old age, death. All in logical, linear, chronological order. Since our universe is conceived along a single line that starts in the past, makes a stopover in the present, and then projects into the future. Do you follow me? Yes, of course I follow you. Well, imagine now that this entire temporal architecture crumbles, falls apart, dissolves. Imagine that something or someone has altered the foundations of our universe, changing the rules of the game, forever annihilating our idea of time. The concepts of past, present, and future. Well, I think you just lost me, Chris. Then let me continue with the metaphor of the photographs. Imagine now that a card dealer takes all these snapshots that sum up the life of this person, shuffles them, and places them in a stack in one spot on the card table. What would we have then? There would no longer be a chronological line, Michael. There would be no past, present, or future. Each of the individual events captured Holy in shit, these right. photographs, they would all be happening simultaneously at the exact same point in time. And that point we would call... The dead synchronicity point! Exactly. Holy shit, alright! Now our world is abandoning its old physical laws and getting closer to that dead synchronicity point where time no longer exists. And therefore, all the phenomena and events that happened or will happen in the universe will start to be stacked on top of other ones, like the photographs in the dealer's deck. That sounds crazy. How credible do you think this report is? Completely, Michael. The dead synchronicity point is a fact, and the worst thing is that we're approaching it faster and faster. It'll only be a matter of days, at best maybe a few weeks, before the universe enters this new state. Time is ending, in every sense. And what does all this have to do with us? Come on, do you still not see it? This change in the architecture of the universe, this nullification of time, is the real origin of the Great Wave, the dissolved, and the emergence of the new world. And what the hell do the dissolved have to do with all this? According to the report, the dissolved are still a big mystery. There isn't much information about them or their disease. What we do know is that they are people who are especially sensitive to the dead synchronicity point, and that is what's so tragic about them. Especially sensitive? Of course. This transformation, this radical and overwhelming change in the basic structure of the universe is totally incompatible with human life. We're condemned to die, Michael. Each and every one of us. That's terrible. How can you be so sure of that? If you think about it rationally, it's obvious. Our bodies are the product of hundreds of thousands of years of evolution, of a gradual and precarious adaptation to the environment, the universe, and its physical laws. Reaching the dead synchronicity point, the annihilation of time, we'd need another hundred thousand years to adapt to such a drastic change. And what do you think will happen to the human race, to each and every one of us when this process concludes? I'll tell you. Our primary metabolism will go into a state of shock. Our entire cell structure will be jolted so profoundly and so violently that what we now call our bodies will lose all coherence, leaving behind just a brown puddle as evidence of our existence. We'll dissolve. Those poor sick people. Indeed. According to the report, the dissolved are simply pioneers people who are ahead of their time, the vanguard of the human race in its final extinction. That's why some cases started cropping up so early, even before the Great Wave. Their illness was the harbinger of the enormous explosion that was to follow. It preceded it by hours, even days, 
And that's why the cases are multiplying exponentially as we get closer to the end. Do you understand? We'll all end up turning into dissolved. So the great wave was caused by this approach to the dead synchronicity point? Yes, Michael. The great wave was the first manifestation of our universe's approach to the dead synchronicity point. That's why the catastrophe struck at the same time all over the planet. It wasn't just a local occurrence, it had global dimensions. It was the first clear and obvious sign that something was going wrong. And it brought chaos and misery to the world, as you've been seeing yourself since you woke up. The last time we spoke, you told me that there could be a solution. A way to reverse all this madness. Yes, and that's the best part of the report. Theoretically, Michael, and paradoxical as it may sound, our progress toward the dead synchronicity point also brings the opportunity to change things, to turn the process around and return to where we were before our world collapsed. And how would that be possible? By penetrating the very center of the anomaly, the deepest nucleus of dead synchronicity, and arriving at the point where time is just starting to fold back into itself before the process is completed, if Inside the dead synchronicity point, each and every one of the events that have happened or will happen in the universe unfold, then surely it must be possible to gain access to the moment when something or someone triggered the catastrophe and stop it. I can't believe what I'm hearing. You're talking about time travel. Yes, I'm talking about the possibility of accessing the past to save our present and our future of turning the great wave and all its consequences into a mere nightmare that never actually happened. The report talks about the hypothetical existence of a door leading into the very heart of the dead synchronicity point, a door to each and every one of the snapshots of the past, present, and future of our universe. And if, through that door, we had a chance to access the precise instant when everything went haywire, then we might be able to change things. Michael, that's what we've got to focus on in whatever time we have left. But I have to continue studying this report. I'm sure there are more answers in it, and you have got to help me. You're telling me that the dead synchronicity point is the origin of all this chaos? That our only chance of salvation is a theoretical journey to the past? Or sooner or later we'll all be obliterated? Like those poor dissolved? That's right, Michael. So we'd better get to work on it as soon as possible. By the way, the report also mentions another very interesting thing about the dissolved. What is it? It seems that in their trances, through their trips to the underground highways, the sick form a strange relationship with each other. It's as if the disease unites them, regardless of any physical distance that might separate them. The report is very unclear on this point, but it seems as if the dissolved are somehow linked, connected. My God, that can't be. Remember, please remember. Everything fits now, everything makes sense. Please, enough, my head. Emily asked me to tell you that we're connected, Michael. We're connected. Holy shit, all right! What's going on? Chris, get one of those tests ready, fast. But what for? You don't think that you're also... Do as I say. Okay. Damn. Give me your hand. Do as I say, bitch! It's positive. Michael, you're sick. You're a dissolved. No. That can't be. No. No. Michael. Michael. Wake up. Emily? Emily. Is that you? Please, Michael, wake up. Wake up. Is that really you? Where, where am I? Yes, Michael. It's me. You are... on the underground highways.
Holy shit! Pretty much guaranteeing a sequel there. Anyways, folks, that wraps it up for Dead Synchronicity. I hope you enjoyed it. Another pretty good game from uh, Victor Rama. It's a Kickstarter. In association with Dadalic Entertainment. If you haven't checked out my other Dadalic point and click adventures, you fucking should. Edna and Harvey is great. Deponia. I'm supposed to be doing a sequel to Whispered World eventually. I think it's out yet. Anyways, that wraps it up. Stay tuned for some more Halloween goodness soon to come. I'm gonna get started on it right away. All right, let's make fun of people in the credits. The game order win. Felipe Gomez. That's my landscaper's name. Mark Lovegrove, still a virgin. Serena Nelson. Buddy ass bitch. The blue. I think he's from Kickstarter. The fucking punk. 1600 backers. We love you. Oh yeah, we gotta check out uh, the game hoarder. He should be up in the credits. He's not. I hope all these people die in a fire. Senior producer Matthias Zorn. Died of eating too much corn. Support Maria Urban. I don't have anything for that bitch. Catherine Dexter. Fucked her last week. Proofreading. A bunch of fucking people that don't even speak English. Q&A team. Fuck all of you. Except Daniel. He's cool. Sound engineer, Martin Schmicky Kit. It's a fucking Nazi. Voices. Game Order didn't get to do the voices in this game, which is uh, obviously why the voice acting isn't as good as it could have been. If you want to hear some, some true Game Order voice acting, then you need to play Quest for Infamy. Where I was actually in the game as Lobo the Rogue. Nazi localization. Just kidding. I'm German, so I'm not allowed to say shit like that. Michael was voiced by Akim! Akim Bush! Wolf Frost! Eberhard Har! Har! Chris! Chris! Eberhard Har! It's a fucking pirate, I guess. Thug City Dweller by Christos. Topless. That's what his mom was last night in my room. Fat soldier. Bertrand Mice. I liked him. He was cool until he beat the shit out of my character. Alright, here we go. Um, let's see, it should be under Ron Game Hoarder Musial. Holy fuck, look at all these assholes. The name starts with A. Fuck all of you. be here a while. I'm going to stop the camera because who the fuck cares about these people? Alright, you're actually able to pause it with the little dial up here, so there we are. I had to go through the credits again because I wasn't paying attention and I missed my fucking name. There's the game order, bitches. Yet another Kickstarter game, eternally. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you soon. Some more good shit. Fuck all the rest of these people. See if there's anything smart ass at the end. Couldn't have happened without you, mates. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Eat a dick. <laughs>